This is a sermon I recently delivered at St. Francis in the Redwoods Episcopal Church. The subject is John the Baptist <clears throat> in chapter one of the Gospel of John. Four of us deliver sermons in rotation in this church, our priest and three of us laity. We all have quite distinct voices and vive la différence. Everything we do is part of our ministry to God. So John, the first chapter of John, 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This one came to a witness in order that he might witness concerning the light, in order that all might believe through him. John the Baptist, I think, is misunderstood and seriously underrated. John needed a herald to proclaim his coming, and his cousin John was perfect for the job. In fact, too perfect. John tried hard to send his disciples on to Jesus, but had so much personal charisma that many never stopped following him. Think Han Solo and Luke Skywalker. As late as A.D. 250, the Clementine recognitions tell us that there were some of John's disciples who preached about him as if their master was the Messiah. There is even a separate Abrahamic religion, Mandaism, called Christians of St. John that still has 60,000 followers to this day. It embraces John as the last and greatest prophet. The evangelical priest Bob Diffenbach describes John this way. <clears throat> By nearly any standard, one would have to admit that John is unique. He dressed strangely, wearing a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt. His diet consisted of locusts and wild honey. He kept the Nazarite vow refraining from wine and strong drink. Filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb, he was a man of prayer who taught his disciples to pray. John was the talk of the town from the time of his birth. His father, Zacharias, a priest, and his mother had been unable to bear children, especially after she reached old age. John's birth was supernatural. When John began to preach, people came in large numbers to hear him. People from all over Judea and Jerusalem were going over going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John made baptism a ritual that prepared the repentant for the end of the world. I could only assume that he did this for years, earning the devoted allegiance of thousands. In the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus himself refers to John as Elijah, but in the Gospel of John, he declares himself to be only the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. This seems to have been a late attempt to minimize John's ministry, for that, perhaps that is why our Feast of the Nativity of John um, is on June 24th, as far away from Christmas as, po as possible. Luke 3. And the crowds asked John, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, 
Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false, at false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. What can we learn from this? John had all the answers, had all the moves, but absolutely wasn't Jesus. What John was asking of people was radical but comfortable. It did not overly disturb the social context. Jesus asked for more, much more than most would have been willing to give back then or now. Jesus wanted to supersede the rigid legalized religious practice, which could also be described as today with a better faith. He asked for people to go against long-time traditional society and to follow him. Impossible for most, but an essential few made that commitment anyhow and found their lives way more satisfying as a result. What Jesus asked for us today, here, is to succor him among our hungry and downtrodden and support the recovery of others. Our being the downtown church is so Jesus. The impact of our presence is huge. This month, this month, we are all pledging what we can to continue our Jesus work here downtown. Carolyn Lewis, professor of homolytics at Luther Seminary has this to say. The John of this third Sunday of Advent is the John that points to Jesus and says, Behold, did you see him? It's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For John's gospel, sin is not our moral laxity or the various transgressions we have committed that we so easily count up on a daily basis. Sin is unbelief, which has its tragic, tragic consequence, separation from God. Sin is unbelief, which has as its tragic consequence separation from God. It seems that the last thing that separated God from God's creation was to know what it meant to be us. What it, the last thing that separated God from God's creation was to know what it means to be us. What it feels like, sounds like, tastes like, smells like, looks like, just like us. So here comes Christmas. Let us all embrace this Advent with joy. Our Lord is about to be born. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, please reaffirm in our hearts that all of us, both male and female, friends and strangers, are your beloved children. Pray that we see your face in everyone we meet. You once told us that what we do for the least of us is what we do for you. Amen.